What is up, down, and sideways, you lovely individuals? We are back on League Unlock. It is Eric and Mark here with you guys, uh, rolling back into a little bit of LCK action, LPL. Some big, big names on the docket, maybe some slightly one-sided matchups, but really, in what was maybe going to be, I'm not going to say marquee, but interesting, in Hanwha Life versus Kwang Dong, didn't exactly end up being uh, the closest series, and that is mainly because of an individual performance out of Mr. Viper, especially in Game 2. And now, as we're getting halfway through this split, I'm legitimately sitting here going, is Viper the best AD carry in the world right now? Not just the LCK, you can include all the other regions. I think that that one might be already locked up, given the performances that we have seen from Viper and how much of an importance he is to the success of Hanwha Life, I'm ready to put him in the territory of part of, you know, possibly the best performing players, regardless of position right now in the world and how he is playing. Very, very clean, crisp performances from him. Maybe not necessarily to the full extent of power or the numbers that you want in that first game, but you look at that second game and that Ezreal performance, he is clutch. He is the big deciding factor for Hanwha Life and why they're coming away with a 2-0 in this series. Especially when it seemed like a couple of the other guys on his team wanted to go to game three. They, uh, <laughs> they didn't want to close out that second game, but he was having none of it with the 11-0 Ezreal. But now, I mean, you combined, he had a fantastic series against T1 in that head-to-head -head against Guma and Kyria in the bot lane. Ruler isn't his normal peak self on JDG right now, and I'm hard-pressed to come up with someone who's playing better than Viper in that ADC spot. I think you look at Viper and how he is playing and what type of change has gone on for him. I think the big one as well is obviously looking at what changes happened for Hanwha Life, bringing in Peanut, bringing in Doran in the top side, and even more, you know, most importantly, looking down in the bottom lane and looking at that duo and talking about how they've been able to gel together is a big important part of it. But it really has been about the stability that Viper now has with this roster, with the comfort of being home in Korea. All these things have combined into getting this level of performance out of him, where you can talk about him at the very forefront of the ADCs. Never mind, at the very forefront of all professional players in League of Legends. And combine that with now the meta kind of transitioning into picks that are his absolute comfort zone in the Ezreal we saw. Obviously, he's remained one of the most exciting Kaisa players since his debut in 2018, basically. But more of these uh, comps where he can be the guy, the hyper carry that they're featured around in these team fights, And you're only going to be talking about this guy more and more as the split goes on. And there's very, it's a very small list of junglers that you can go through that you say are going to make this guy even better down in that bottom lane. And one of those ones, big one on that list is Peanut for Hanwha Life. You're looking at him and how he can help accelerate someone like Viper down in the bottom lane has been a big part of it. I think that veteran savvy that he has gained and, and developed over his career has certainly shined through this season for Hanwha Life and in the explosion of power that we are able to get through the bottom lane uh, from Viper. Seven and two now, Hanwha Life pushing pretty much everybody in the LCK, even have had some competitive games against Gen G. So maybe Viper talking best AD carry in the world, but now you got APA having some competition for the best mid lane zigs around because Showmaker was having some fun against OK Savings Bank Breon. And anytime Showmaker's laughing it up on the rift, it just cures depression around the world to see this guy smile and having fun. I, 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 oh, maybe, maybe Faker, maybe only Faker cracking a smile. Something like that could be a better sight than Showmaker having fun out there on the rift. Love to see it and love to see the result here from D plus Kia. Yes, it's okay, bro. And you can't take too much away from this one, but the clean performances, the acceleration of how they were able to get to that power point in these games. That's what I love to have seen from D plus Kia. You mentioned the shout out to the Ziggs. Is that just because Ziggs has really emerged through the meta and kind of one of these options to change something in the mid lane from, from what you're you know going to be going up against and maybe push up a different type of pace on taking down towers, things like that? 
or was it the shout out to APA? And is it maybe the APA effect, let's call it, and showing how busted this champion can be? And really, if you learn the ins and outs of it, that it's almost always in the meta and always an option to shake things up and take a different angle. Showmaker takes that angle and has a heck of a, have a heck of a good time with it, taking down the turrets. I mean, listen, we know for many reasons Tristana is busted right now. A lot of those is the sieging and turret killing capabilities that she has uh, with that E. And Ziggs brings that in. D plus wanted none of that corky Tristana smoke today. They banned that uh, in both games. That's it done with this meta showmaker wants to play leblanc which is the game he actually picked mvp up on and then uh the zigs here in that second game but hey d plus continues to be an absolute treat to watch lucid was on tank duty today but continued to look good and just you know be one of the premier junglers at 19 years old it was it was a you know unremarkable performance for lucid but it's one of those un, you know it's the category of unremarkable because it was just everything you needed it was just the check mark it was nothing and it extra, says no... and Maokai, so right it's you know you hey you got the spaghetti you got the very simple you know a little bit of parmesan on top everything done no no extra touches going on for that one with lucid the other one i want to mention on d plus kia is aiming down in the bottom lane i think we've been certainly aware to criticize and, and point out where we've seen little mistakes from him that might hold back a D plus Kia once you're talking about going from just good to great tier, from great to the excellent tier that a Gen G and a T1 can populate in the LCK. Aiming's performance throughout this series and his, uh, you know, the way that you were able to rely on him for that damage, that was a good, a good move for me. How about for all the insane stats and numbers we've talked about for aiming? This was his first player of the game that he picked up in game two, the entire split. That's actually bonkers because he's had pretty good performances. He's had games where he's run away with the score as well. But maybe it's been a situation where, well, there's also someone called Showmaker on the lineup and also Lucid maybe sometimes has had his share of player of the games. It's a tough, tough world for Mr. Aiming to claim one on D plus Kia. The bros, though, setting us up for the Titanic 0 and 10 versus 10 and 0 matchup no. against Gen G eventually. Just doing their part. Shout out D Plus for keeping it on track. Just keeping the, the bookends of the LCK in order is, is the way that I look at that with Gen G and uh, the old bros. Everyone was getting a notification alert. A fraud watch sighting, Weibo Gaming. We've been hyping them up. They look good. Trying to get rid of the fraud allegations. Tough matchup against TES today, though, and a very tough matchup in the jungle. I'm convinced that Tarzan has been split into two people since he came over to the LPL because going from just highlighting him to these AP carries popping off to now this series, he was basically a minion at times he got the poppy was uh, absolutely abysmal so going from an ap carry to then the poppy game but he was gapped by tn and it looked like 1600 damage tarzan again i hate this because it's gonna be mean to tarzan that's oh that's a that's a unfair comparison to a minion my man minions minion lives matter they contribute come on they're doing some things out there Tarzan, I don't think his lives were mattering all that much in this game. They were certainly not very valuable for Weibo Gaming, and this is not a, a valuable series for Weibo. The sound that you are hearing, that's that, you know, it's not the alert on your phone, the fraud alert that you're hearing. You're hearing tons of fraud agencies bringing out the tape, the red fragile tape type of situation that just says fraud over it. And that's what they're putting on all the Weibo packages to make sure that they know that that's what's going on. I, it's such a bizarre conundrum what Weibo is because you know that there is potential. You know there is talent on this team in this era and possible iteration of Weibo and they were able to get it, but they're just not able to grasp it. They're not able to bring it all together at the same time. You know, it's, it's like those TikToks that you're seeing of people bringing all the weird candies and putting it in a bowl and someone's just bringing a bunch of wet fruit and dumping it in with all the sugared candy type of situation. Weibo, what is going on? Weibo, truly the wet fruit of the LPL. Ugh. That's what they're going for. But obviously a good bounce back for TES. Uh, Jackie Love and Mako definitely gapped this series. Talk about not just Korean Ezreals. You got some Chinese Ezreals doing some uh, deadly things on the Rift as well. And how about 
the misfortune sightings we're seeing across different regions now i feel like every time i see it it's being picked into a brom that just eats up her <laughs> ulti but still she's having big impact i feel like that's been a, a thing of maybe she's been out of the meta for a long enough time that people have kind of forgotten oh that's that might be an issue when we are taking the misfortune it wasn't really an issue for the misfortune and this one just kept blasting and had more than enough damage more than enough opportunities to still take down uh the opponents misfortune does uh, bring an interesting little option little change up little switch up into the bottom lane compared to what we have been seeing and as well with things like lucian like zary making more of an appearance outside of the bottom lane as well i think that's going to be where we're finding these change-ups go on. Top esports, though, as you mentioned, this was an important and very, a very resounding bounce back from them. I think it's unfortunate that it's going to kind of not echo quite as loudly because you're looking at Weibo Gaming as frauds because this performance from Tarzan was so egregious type of thing. That's where you're going to not necessarily gain as many points back as you wanted to. But for top esports, an important bounce back and stake that they are people to be, uh, you know, the team that we talk about all the time in the LPL. And obviously people would legitimately be freaking out if they started zero and three yes. in the summer split. But frauds are not technically Weibo still got the better record at two and two. So <laughs> that's the weirdness of how this is shaped out in the LPL. And again, one of these situations where you can have this roller coaster of emotions with Weibo to go all the way through pretty much everything before it and show us that yes, this is not a real legitimate threat, Weibo. They're not going to hit that type of peak. And then eventually they get into this part of the LPL. And against all odds, they start to hit that peak. And now we found another dip and dive for Weibo Gaming. And I don't anticipate this one to be a rapid ascent back. It's going to be a rapid ascent back for top esports, most likely as the split goes on. But uh, LCK, LPL, keep rolling. We're going to preview all this LCS and LEC over the weekend later. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people. Thanks so much for hanging out. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.